2025 saw Google release some major updates to not only to reporting, but also the optimization options that you have for Performance Max. And this includes releasing channel reporting data, also giving you asset level data, and then also sharing the search terms and allowing you to add negative keywords to your Performance Max campaign. But when it comes to optimizing your Performance Max campaign, the mantra that I really like to remind you is that just because you can do something doesn't mean that you should. And this really centers around negative keywords and adding them into Performance Max. Now in this video, I'm gonna show you how we do it. And it is a really, really welcome addition to the optimization options that we have for Performance Max. So I'm not belittling the ability to be able to do it. However, I do have some concerns with the way that some people are rolling out hundreds and hundreds of different negative keywords to their Performance Max campaigns. I do like to stress a lot of caution with adding negative keywords to Performance Max. There are some really, really clear instances for why you would wanna add a negative keyword. And this very much centers around setting up what we call guardrails, where you don't want Performance Max to target keywords that you might be targeting inside of other Performance Max campaigns in your same account, or they may be for products or services that you just don't offer. Perfect example, you may be an air conditioning business that only does installations, so it makes sense in Performance Max to cut off any keywords that have to do with maintenance because Google may think that it wants to test in those areas. So it's more about providing guardrails for Google Ads rather than going through painstakingly every single individual keyword phrase and adding them as a negative because they haven't converted. If you want full control over every search term that Google shows your ads to, and if you also want control over the ad copy that Google shows within those ads, Performance Max probably isn't for you. And that's the word of warning that I do just wanna give you is that remember with Performance Max, it was built to generate more conversions across a wide network of platforms. Not only in Google search, so shopping of your e-commerce brand, YouTube display, maps, and also the discovery network. So just keep that in mind as we talk about optimizing Performance Max campaigns. All right. so. In this video, with these optimization videos, I like to make them as practical as possible. So I'm gonna jump over and do a screen share. But I do just wanna note, if you follow that link in the description below, you can get access to my Google Ads optimization checklist, which I'm gonna be showing you how we use it right now. And you also get access to Google Ads Optimize, which is a selection of videos, which takes you through how to complete all of the different optimization actions that you'll need for Google Ads in 2026. And you also get all my campaign setup guides. So just follow that link in the description below. Right now, let's head over to the screen share so I can take you through the optimization process for Performance Max. All right, so as we said, this is our optimization checklist. And if you see, if you go over to the Performance Max tab, you can see all of the different optimization actions that we recommend that you can complete in your Performance Max campaign. We're really gonna be focusing on spending and segmentation. And this is under my STAB method, which is the S stands for spending and segmentation. The T stands for targeting. The A stands for your ads and your landing pages and the B is for bidding. Now I will go through and show a little bit about bidding because it is really, really important for Performance Max. But I do also wanna just point out that we will be releasing another full video about bidding strategies. So make sure that you subscribe, turn on that notification bell so you see when that video is released in a couple of weeks from now. But let's start with spending and segmentation. So when it comes to your spending and segmentation, what the goal here is that you want to really look, think about how you wanna control the spend, remembering with Google Ads that your budget is set at the campaign level. So what I wanna show you in through here, this is an e-commerce example. They've got quite a lot of different product categories which are really, really different. So it's controlled around two different areas. They advertise in Europe and also the US. So the structure, what they've got in through here is I'll just show you the way that we've gone through and done this. And also too, they also do ads in Australia is that this is the same product. So we'll call this product category one. This is their performance max for Europe. This is their performance max for US and Canada. And this is their performance max for Australia. And this is their second product category. And it's once again, broken into the US, Europe and Australia. Now the reason for why we have done that, and this comes down to this, how you wanna segment out your spending. So one thing that we would say with Performance Max is that especially if you've got a lot of different product categories or a lot of different services for that matter, or you're targeting a lot of different keyword themes, is quite often Performance Max will really hone in on the top 20, 30, sometimes even 40% products and keywords. And then it doesn't really spend any money on those other products. So generally what we'll start with is we'll start with a smaller structure and then we'll build out to other performance max campaigns or other types of campaigns if we see any campaign themes which are not working. So it's for that reason what we do recommend is that when it comes into your asset groups, you want to run some different asset groups. So if you've got five core product categories, you might start with one performance max campaign 
five asset groups. And then if you see two or three of those asset groups, which are getting some good conversion metrics, but no spend, that's when you'd go through and break them out into another campaign. So that's the first way of what you can go through, reviewing your spending and your segmentation. All right, let's now go into the targeting. So the big thing that everyone was really, really excited about with Performance Max this year, and let me just go through and show you where you can actually go through and see this, is we've got a Performance Max campaign that we're doing here. If you go through and select that Performance Max campaign, and then go into insights and reports, you'll see search terms. This is where you can actually go through and you can review the individual search terms and then you can go through and add them as a negative keyword. As I said, this is where you do want to run with some caution. It's not just about going through and any keywords which are not converting, just adding them as negative keywords. I'll show you what we're going in through here is if you go through to audiences, keywords, and content with the Performance Max campaign still selected, if you go through to keywords, you can actually see the negative keywords that we have added. So we'd like to add this in as a list so you can see we call it US Performance Max Negatives. So you could just call it PMAX Negatives. What we are really focusing on here, perfect example is for this one, there's a lot of search terms for an affiliated product about nursing and pharmacists. And we do not offer those services. So that's why we've added them as a negative keyword. As well, we don't offer health insurance. So we're taking out search terms which we know don't convert. Now, so that's the first thing. So you definitely wanna be adding in a negative keyword if it's for a service or product that you don't service or that you don't offer. The second thing is that you do wanna take out some what we call sort of wasted spend, you know, things around contact, things around login, things around download, things around logos. Once again, these are the things which you just know that aren't gonna convert or aren't gonna to lead to conversion. So yes, I do want you to add in some negative keywords to performance max, but please just don't go through and add in a search term because it hasn't converted. Because the amount of times we see um, conversions come from search terms we didn't think would convert would surprise you. What I want you to think about when it comes to negative keywords and performance max, it's more about guardrails and stopping Google going into areas that you don't want it to go through as opposed to trying to individually stop all of those individual keywords which you don't think are gonna convert. That's the main thing that you can do with your targeting. The other thing that I will show you in with a performance max campaign that you can do as well is if you go into your settings, so go to campaigns and settings. There are some new features that you can actually do for exclusions. And this is something that we do like as well. If you go into your demographic exclusions, now I do recommend that you add in a brand exclusion. If you go into your demographic exclusions, you can set this by age or by gender. And this can be really, really important is that if you run a product that you know only is suitable for people in that 25 to 54 age bracket. You can add them on as age exclusions. You also do want to make sure that you're not too hasty here because sometimes you can get some people outside of those age brackets, which could be uh, converting. But if you've got some really, really solid data, that is something that you can do from there. So that's two options that you've got for targeting, refining through keywords, and also refining through age exclusions. As I said, I'm not gonna go through the full list in the optimization checklist, because if you follow that link in the description below, you can get access to that product, which has all of these videos in a short video format. Let's now go to ads and landing pages. Obviously, we're not gonna be focusing on, on the landing pages in this video, but we will focus on the ads. And this is probably the best feature that I really enjoyed, or I think is a real benefit that Google gave us this year, and that is if you go into these assets, you can actually see asset type data. So we've got it filtered to headline. If you wanna know how to do that, just go to add filter, go to asset type and select headline or you could select description. And what we wanna do through here is we wanna look at the, generally what I'm looking at is the bottom three to five headlines because what you find very, very quickly in sort of performance max, you can see if we're just looking at the impressions from here, top one, 5,000, 3,000, 1,800, 1,600, these bottom ones, they just don't get any impressions. So what we do from there is we'll take the bottom four or five headlines and remove them and add in some new testing. What I do like to do when you are changing an ad copy is try to come up with something new rather than just changing one word or changing something, really looking at these bottom three to five headlines, they're not showing it anyway. Let's actually be a little bit aggressive with our testing and try some new themes and formats in there. In this video playlist, I speak a lot about my ad copy. There's a whole video on ad copy and how we structure these. I do recommend that you go through and watch this. And right now, let's go through to the last part, which is our bidding. I did say that I'm not gonna spend too much time on bidding. And the reason for that is, is because we've got a whole video coming up and bidding is quite a complex thing to get right. But let me just go through and show you one thing that we like to do when it comes to Performance Max and it's in the overview section. So if you look at an individual Performance Max campaign in the overview section, you can use this feature which is called Average Target CPA. If you're running ROAS, it can be Average Target ROAS. When you're 
optimizing your bidding strategy, I like to look at longer rounds of data. The other thing you need to think about with Performance Max is generally I don't take the last two weeks into account. And what I also like to do is I also like to look at a weekly basis, which we've got through here. Now, what you wanna see through here is that we haven't made any changes to our target CPA all year. And that's because a pretty detailed strategy that we've got in through here. The reason for why we've kept this here is because with this Performance Max campaign, you need to also think about what else is in your account. We've got another 10 different search campaigns, which is really driving performance as well. The way that we're using this Performance Max campaign is it's really about focusing on new customers, driving some volume, which they are then converting in the search campaigns. But the marker here is that we're also doing on completed sales. So these aren't just form inquiries. These are people who are we're using offline conversions here. And the goal is that this needs to stay under 100 for the cost per conversion. So that's why for us, what we're looking at this target CPA of, of 95, we've kept it in there for a long time. So it's something that you don't have to change all the time. But what I do want to show you in here, we're now looking at e-commerce examples. I want to show you what happens when you do go through and change your target ROAS. So you can see here for this one, we have gone through and made some changes to the target ROAS. I'll move this over to clicks. And you can see from here, a couple of things that we did do. So this campaign started in through here. We didn't use a target ROAS right at the start. We eventually added in a target ROAS of 420. But what we're waiting in through here, you can see we had four or five weeks where we were getting you know above we're getting seven, we're getting six, we're getting seven, and it was starting to jump around a little bit too much. So that's why we added in that target ROAS, which then what you can see from here is that we removed these little dips. Now you need to make sure that you've got enough conversion metrics and all those things happening, but that then allowed us to get some good growth. What I also wanna show you in through here, when we wanted to start to increase the budget, which we did do, we actually did this with a safeguard of increasing that target ROAS. We increased it up to 450, but Previously, what you could see from here is that we had some really good weeks that really gave us those averages to allow it to grow. The main thing I do want you to think about with target ROAS is some people may look at this and go, oh, your target ROAS could be higher. You really need to be thinking about because this individual Performance Max campaign sits in an account which has three other Performance Max campaigns and this business is also wanting to grow and scale really, really quickly. That's why we've kept as much room as possible so that we don't want the target ROAS to act as a break because for this business, volume of sales is really, really important. So that's where you do need to get the mix right to make sure you're getting it right with your target ROAS and with your target bidding settings. As I said, that is an introduction because we are gonna be releasing another video which really breaks down how to get the most out of smart bidding with Google Ads in 2026. All right, now remember, if you wanted to see all those different optimization actions that you can complete for your Performance Max campaigns, make sure you follow that link in the description below so you can get access not only to my Google Ads optimization checklist, but also you can get that full collection of videos that walks you through how to complete each of those optimization actions. Thank you so much for joining me. My name is Aaron Young from Define Digital Academy. And if you would like to watch that video about ad copy, remember I did point out about how we structure our ads. I want you to go through and watch this video right here. Or if you wanna watch the full playlist that's available in Get Google Ready for 2026, go through and watch this playlist here. There's still a couple more videos that we have to release, so make sure you not only subscribe, but turn on that notification bell so you don't miss any of the videos. See ya.